Hello everybody. Um, had a beautiful morning at the beach today. Isaac got to go back to school and um, Chuck and Olivia and I went to the beach for just a few um, hours. Um, Chuck was surfing and Olivia and I were just reading by each other and enjoying each other's company and it was just amazing. I love to be at the ocean but it's really hard um, with Isaac. So this was a Olivia, dad and mama. Uh, short outing before I had to pick up Isaac from school. Please continue to keep him in prayer as he started back today. Um, and I just wanted to share that, you know, this morning I was reading in Esther and how the evil Haman, he wanted to have Mordecai killed because of his um, not being willing to bow to him. And yet the Lord um, turned it around and he had these gallows 50 foot high. I thought, gosh, how tall is that, you know? had these gallows um, erected so um, and he went he wanted to tell the king please you know hang uh, Mordecai from these gallows and then um, the king was disturbed in a dream and he said I, I, I'm disturbed I want to read the the chronicles of what happened you know to to help me ease my Letter mind. Letter Factory. Letter Factory. Go watch it. Go watch it Letter Factory. I done the Almost. iPad. Go play with your iPad. Open toys. Then toys. Open it. Open it. Open it. Gather. Soon. The it's coming. It. Then open it. Box. Open the box. So the um, the king had his um, servants bring the chronicles, and they were being read to him, and it talked about this plot where this man named uh, Mordecai um, discovered this plot and saved the king's life, and he goes, "Hey, wait a minute." Was this man ever honored? Did he ever receive any, you know, praise or reward for saving my life? And the men looked around and said, oh, no, King, we never did anything for this guy. And they said, we need to honor him. And so, you know, the story in the book of Esther, the, um, the king tells Haman, the very guy that hates Mordecai, we got to honor this man. So Mordecai is greatly honored. And, um, Haman goes to the second feast of Esther and the king. And I just think it's so amazing how our God turns events around. And we're so fearful and we'll, we're so scared of things. And our heart is beating fast and maybe we can't even eat. And we're distressed and we're disturbed. And God just turns it around, you know, on its face. And even today I got a call from a client who's, um, the police were called on her. And she did nothing wrong, but it's just some strife going on. And she was so disturbed and so distressed and she called me and I picked up and my client says, I'm so glad you answered. And just that stress that the enemy puts on us, you know, whether it's marital stress, children stress, caregiving for an adult parent stress, um, financial stress, you know, the Olympics are on this, the, the pressures of wanting to, you know, make your country proud. We all go through different stressors of life but I, I love how God can I turn it around it. it's not on here it's only on the Little TV fan. I'm, I'm fan. it's not on here I'm so sorry I'm so TV. sorry yeah go watch it in your room daddy he's coming right now chocolate. and open then chocolate down. and your toys yes open it. and you go open it sure let's open. Let's open it so anyway I just wanted to encourage you all that our God has a plan and the stressors in our life they're very real and the physical things that we sustain headaches a stomach ache sleepless nights um you know a migraine um i sometimes get twitching i get twitching in my eyes sometimes my lip twitches those are very real physical repercussions of our stress but we've got to know and we've got to remember that our God has a plan and he will turn around the evil things and the wicked plots around on their face. And so we've got to remember that. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this beautiful day, God. I thank you for the morning at the ocean, seeing the waves, um, being there and just enjoying your creation, Lord, wherever we're at, even in the heat of the Inland Empire, all of your creation screams 
that you are good and that you are God. The hummingbirds, the monarch butterflies, Lord, the smell of jasmine and gardenia, the smells of summer, Lord. There's so many smells and scents that just remind us of an amazing God that you are. And we worship you, Father. We don't want to worship the creature. We want to worship the creator. As it says in Romans, the people of the world worship the creature rather than the creator. And I think of people that love their pets and there's nothing wrong with enjoying your pet but some people literally worship the wrong things and so I just pray God that you would help us to be still and know you are God to worship you and you alone in spirit and in truth to remember God that you are still working that you do do turn around the ugly things the scary things the stressful things the stress failed things the doctor's diagnosis whatever it is you turn it around God because you are merciful Daddy. God and your plan and purpose prevails, Lord. And so we just trust you and we hold on to you with both hands, God. We trust you, Lord. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And just even being so blessed that Isaac was able to go back to school today, go back to Port Butte without any incident, with enjoying to see his teacher, enjoying to be able to transition back. What a blessing, God, and I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for the many victories that you've done through Isaac. I thank you for the victories that have yet to be accomplished, Lord. Only you know what you can do. Your word says, behold, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No, there's nothing too hard for you, Lord. I trust in you, and I thank you. Father in heaven, God most high, I want to pray for Sandy right now as this evening she will be sharing with under his wings. She's poured over her notes. She's meditated on you. She's picked out the scriptures that you've pointed out for her. And so now her to just do it, to execute and to share with boldness, with courage, Lord, and bravery. And that she would share exactly what you would have her to share, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, that it was just this month, August of last year that Isaac was in the hospital at Loma Linda. And I don't want to remember it. I don't like remembering it. But here we are, August of 2021, and Isaac is healthy and he's home and he's been seizure free. And all I can do is give you praise and give you thanks, Father, for all of your good gifts. And Father, there's still so many prayers yet to be answered, God. I wanna pray for my sweet sister in Christ, Barbara, as she's been heavy for her family that are backslidden. You know them by name, you know what they go through, you know the lifestyles that they've chosen, but God, you're bigger than all that. Speak to the prodigal right now. Draw them back to the foot of the cross. Help them to remember, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus, we are just children. You called us little children. All through 1 John, it says, little children, keep yourself from idols. You, God, called the disciples, these big, birdie, grown, Fishermen, you call them little children. I love it because that's how you see us as your kids, as your little ones. Thank you for that, God. We praise you. We pray you would bring back the prodigals, Lord. Please draw them back before the trumpet sounds and before the rapture, Lord. We know that it's going to happen and we, we await that return, Jesus. Your soon return, God. So please, please, God, draw back the prodigals, Father, in Jesus' name. It's not on the iPad. It's on TV. Want me to help you? On TV. Nether Factory on TV. Daddy. Daddy's coming right now. He's coming. He's coming. Open it. Okay, open it. Go in your room. Let's open the box. Go in your room. Perfect. Chocolate. Then chocolate. Soon. Almost. Soon. Almost. Almost. And so, Father, we also want to pray just for all those that are sick. Tomorrow, Tim, my friend Tim, is having chemo. Would you be with him? Would you be with Chuck as he'll be accompanying him to his chemo appointment? Father, it's so hard to watch your friends hurting, to watch your friends sick, to watch your friends battling something as horrible as cancer. I thank you that Chuck gets to be next to Tim and gets to just be a friend to just know that um, I have a friend here and praying for me, standing in the gap for me and literally sitting next to me. And I just pray it would be a sweet time for these two men that have known each other for many years. And I just thank you for this day. And I just pray you would use the chemo to just kill away all the cancer cells. And I pray the same for Christina Wolf, for Regina, for Riley, for Jennifer Berry, for Lance, for so many have been battling cancer, Father. Please, God, eradicate the cancer cells from their bodies and accelerate the healings. You are the balm in Gilead. You are the healer, Jehovah Rapha. Touch them and heal them. And Lord, our country does not have a body cancer, but our country has a sin cancer. Would you please sweep over 
our country. Holy Spirit, rain down. Forgive us of our sins and heal our land, Lord. We are hurting, God. There's so much evil. There's so much division. There's so many fighting even within the church. It's heartbreaking, God. And only you can heal what these evil things that are going on in our country, fighting and divisions and domestic violence. Father, I pray for those marriages, Eric and Esther and Erica, my friend, and her husband as well, and Magali and her husband, comfort Yasmin and everything she's been through, and Mindy and everything she's been through, and all of the things that these under his wings ladies have been through. Be with them, God, and I pray for the children. The enemy just says, oh, they're just collateral damage, but to you, God, they're broken and shattered. Thank you, Jesus, that you said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke from you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly. And I pray for the children of divorced parents. I pray for the children that are suffering and hurting, watching mom and dad yell and maybe even hurt each other. Please, God, help stop these domestic violence problems, Lord, whether it's verbal abuse or um, adultery or whether it's actual physical abuse, whatever kind of abuse, it's wrong and it hurts your heart. Please intervene, Jesus. I pray against porn addiction. I pray against drug and alcohol addiction. I pray for Tommy, that you would draw him back with cords of love. I pray for um, Christina, this new sister in Christ and everything she's going through. I pray for the church, that you would revive our hearts. I pray for those that, that don't feel comfortable to go to church in person, that you would give them the wisdom to watch online and to get plugged in somewhere. Somewhere, somehow, they would get fellowship, Lord. Please, Lord, we need each other. We need each other. I pray for the Barba family as my cousin just passed away, and my Uncle Junior and Auntie Letty, and all of us were hurting, were mourning, were grieving. He was only 48 years old. I pray, God, for all of the kids going back to school. I know parents are disturbed teachers are disturbed principals are disturbed everybody's disturbed it's not fun to go and buy school supplies and school shop now everyone has to have masks and determine whether or not to get a vaccine we are certainly living in the end times god please god sweep over our land holy spirit come come holy spirit we're waiting for you jesus we pray for revival we pray for hearts that would repent we just pray your kingdom your will be done your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are El Elyon, most high God. You're El, the strong one, the strong one. You're El Che, the living God. You're the good shepherd. You lay down your life for the sheep. You're Emmanuel, God with us. Yahweh Shema, the present one. You're the balm in Gilead, our healer. You're the great I am. You're Yahweh. No one created you. You are Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you're our soon and coming King. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus, the lion and the lamb. Jesus, our bridegroom. Jesus, the true vine. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus, the living water. Jesus, ancient of days. Jesus, bread of life. You're all these things, God. All that we need is in you, God. Forgive us of our sins and keep our hearts pure and undefiled and set our faces as flint towards you every day, all day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.